This is the Dayton Audio Max X 10 inch subwoofer. And in this video, I'm going to unbox this thing and compare it to Dayton Audio's reference high output subwoofer and the Ultimax subwoofer. My name's Justin, and this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. On this channel, I just hang out in the old garage and build speakers. If you're into that kind of thing, hit the like button and stick around while I unbox this subwoofer. I want to say thank you to the people at Dayton Audio and Parts Express. Dayton Audio is the house brand for Parts Express. They sent me this driver so I could review it just for you. So let's unbox it and find out what it's all about. I'm going to compare this to some of the other drivers in the Dayton Audio lineup so that you will know which one is the right subwoofer for you. I love the look of this subwoofer with the dust cap that goes across the entire cone. Like all Dayton Audio subwoofers, there's no logo on the cone, so you get this nice clean look. Here you can see the back side of the cone under the basket and you can see that it is a pressed paper cone and it's fiberglass reinforced. Here are the speaker connections for this dual 2 ohm voice call subwoofer. It's got some nice push style connections that appear to be nickel plated. You can see here the woven tinsel leads along the spider. Here you can see the double stacked magnet as well as some venting on the bottom of the subwoofer. We've got a pole vent with some vents around it as well. So plenty of cooling for this subwoofer. Let's check out the specs. Currently on the Parts Express website, this driver is $120. It weighs 17.65 pounds. It can handle 400 watts of RMS power. Its sensitivity is 86.1 decibels and the X-Max is 11.6 millimeters. According to Parts Express, the optimal sound quality enclosure, if you want to go with a sealed box, is half a cubic foot with an F3 of 55 hertz. For a vented box, you want to go with 1.1 cubic feet for an F3 of 29 hertz. Now that we've had a chance to check out the Max X, let's line it up next to some other Dayton Audio subwoofers, the Reference High Output and the Ultimax. Sitting side by side, you can see they're all fairly beefy subwoofers. The Reference Series High Output handles more power than either the Ultimax or the Max X. In this shot, you can get a really good picture of the size difference between the three drivers. The X Max and the Ultimax seem to be about the same overall height, but the X-Max has a deeper mounting depth. As I said earlier in the video, Parts Express did send me this Max X driver. However, the other two drivers for my own I already had those on hand and had bought those a long time ago. Interestingly enough, the Max X has the lowest X-Max of these three drivers. Here's something cool that I want to show you. What I've got here is a template that I made from an underseat subwoofer enclosure. It's got a standard size opening for a 10 inch subwoofer. And as you can see, the Ultimax will not fit that opening. Let's try the reference high output. Well, it doesn't fit either. It's a little bit closer, but it still doesn't fit. Here's the Max X. And as you can see, it fits like a glove. The Max X has a little bit smaller frame and basket than the other two drivers. So if you're going to use a prefab enclosure, go ahead and get the Max X because it will fit in the standard cutout, whereas the other drivers are larger and probably won't fit. If you want to learn how to pick out a good prefab enclosure, hang on tight. I'll give you some information on that in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and wire this thing up and put it into an old box I had laying around so that we can test bump it. If you want to see the test bump, hang on tight. If you just give the stats a basic look, these subwoofers all seem to be a whole lot alike. So let's dig a little bit deeper and talk about how these three different drivers kind of fit into the lineup of subwoofers over at Parts Express. So why in the world does Parts Express offer three subwoofers that on the surface really seem to be identical to each other? The reference high output here is a 600 watt RMS dual voice coil subwoofer. The X-Max over here is a 400 watt RMS dual voice coil subwoofer. And the Ultimax back here is a 500 watt RMS dual voice coil subwoofer. What is the purpose of all of these drivers that on the surface really seem to be a lot alike? Well, the similarities end on the surface. When you dig down deeper in the specifications, you really get an idea of what these things are all about. Start off with the high output right here. The high output has 
an aluminum cone. So this is a lightweight, rigid material. That aluminum cone is standard for the reference line. That's kind of one of the defining features of that line of drivers. This one comes in dual four ohm voice coil configuration, whereas the others are dual two ohm configurations. The reference series is designed for sound quality. They designed this thing to keep the inductance down and designed it so that it's gonna play really well and like a three-way system. The reference series is their low distortion subwoofers. If you're looking for a sound quality subwoofer that can handle a lot of power and still get loud and low and nasty, the reference is what you want. This is our sound quality driver. So this is the Ultimax. The Ultimax is an entirely different animal. The Ultimax is all about hitting those ultra low frequencies. This subwoofer really shines in a home theater setup. Go get the 18, go throw a thousand watts at it, put that sucker in a huge enclosure and tune that thing at about 15 Hertz. And you'll have a fantastic driver for those low frequency effects in your home theater. It also works great in a car. The power handling is good. The excursion is good. It's got that high roll surround and it's got a ton of excursion. Even though it can do all that, it still plays some really good sound quality. Now let's take a look at the Max X. So the Max X is Dayton Audio's cost-effective car audio subwoofer. It was designed specifically to work in small enclosures. Let's plug this thing up to an amplifier and see how it sounds. The amp on my test bench only puts out 300 watts at 4 ohms, so I'm not pushing this thing anywhere near as hard as I could be. It seems to work just fine. I haven't had a chance to do a lot of extensive testing with it, but I'm pretty happy with this driver. It's doing what a subwoofer is supposed to do, and that's shake things up. If you'd like to learn how to pick out a good prefab box, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see me build a custom enclosure for this subwoofer, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the video. Before you go, I need to give a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon with a special shout out to my newest patron, Dina, and $25 patron, Dylan. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next adventure.